First graders, happy Friday. Today is actually technically a four-day weekend. So I'm reading to you today, but I will not be here on Monday. But Tuesday, I'll be back with hopefully a new book. Hopefully we can finish this. There's still quite a bit left. I might have to finish it on Tuesday. So jumping right in, we are on chapter 11. The doctor takes a hand. The day, oh, picture. <clears throat> The days went by happily for the boxcar children. They found more treasures in the dump, and Henry worked every day for Dr. Moore. One noon, Henry came home with some new stockings for Benny. Benny was very happy about them and made everyone admire them. And when Jesse looked at the new stockings, he had a happy thought. She carefully washed Benny's old stockings and hung them up to dry. That afternoon, she and Violet sat down with the work bag between them to make a bear for Benny. You must make a tail, too, Jessie, begged Benny, watching her put on the arms and legs and head. Bears don't have tails, said Jessie. Your old bear didn't have a tail. But this bear must have a tail, replied Benny, knowing that Jessie would put on two tails if he asked her to. But bears don't have tails? Hmm. I always thought they had, like, little nubs, but maybe I'm just imagining things. I don't know. That's something I have to look up now. But this bear must have a tail. Oh, I just read that. What kind of tail? Asked Jesse at last. Long and thin, said Benny happily, so I can pull it. Benny, cried Jesse laughing. But she made a tail, long and thin, just as Benny had ordered. What's his name, Jesse? Asked Benny. When at last the bear was handed over to him. I haven't thought about it. Name, replied Jesse. Why don't you think up a nice name for him? Well, he made him out of my old stockings. Let's call him Stockings. All right, stockings it is, agreed Jesse, trying not to laugh. And from that day on, the bear's name was Stockings as long as he lived, and he lived to be a very old bear indeed. One afternoon, Jesse saw how long Benny's hair was getting, and she cut it with Violet's scissors. Benny stood quietly while she did it. That's something my wife's going to do soon. She's like, we need to cut your hair. My hair, I mean, it's getting really long, so I'm really having to, like, push it over. It's about time for a haircut. I've been putting it off for a long time. But while his sisters were getting supper, he said to himself, Jesse, cut my hair. I'll get Violet's scissors and cut Watch's hair. He will look better. He found Violet's scissors and made Watch lie down on his side. Then he began to cut his hair off. He's just going for it. Benny said, good dog, watch. You are Jesse's dog, and so I will cut a J in your hair. Hold still now. Oh, watch lay still, and Benny began to cut a J. <clears throat> it was not a very good J, but it looked a little like one. Soon Benny had cut off all the hair on one side with a J in the middle. He stood admiring his work, and just then Jesse came to see what he was doing. Benny, she cried, what are you doing? Then she began to laugh. Oh, Violet, come and see, she called. Watch looks so funny. Jessie laughed and laughed until she almost cried. Violet laughed until she did cry. Then she could, stop, could not stop laughing. She cried and cried. At last, Jessie made up her mind that Violet was really sick. You must go to bed, Violet, she said. She helped her carefully into the boxcar and put pine needles all around her and under her. Then she wet a handkerchief in the cold water of the brook and laid it on her little sister's hot head. Oh, so her sister is actually sick. Okay. I wish Henry would come home, said Jessie. What shall we do? When Henry came at last, he looked at Violet and said that maybe she had a cold. Maybe she sat too long by the brook, he said. If Violet is very sick, she ought to go to the hospital, said Jessie. Yes, I know that, said Henry. And we don't want her to go to a hospital if we can help it. We should... Have to tell her name. Yes, said Jesse. Then Grandfather could find us. The two older children sat up with Violet. They put cold water on her head. But after dark, Violet shook all over. And Jesse was frightened. She covered Violet all over with pine needles, but she still shook. They could not get her warm. I'm going to get Dr. Moore, said Henry. I'm afraid Violet is very sick. Then Henry started to run. He ran even faster than he had run in the race. Down the hill, into the town he ran, until he came to Dr. Moore's house. Please come, he cried. Violet is very sick. 
The doctor said, come and get into my car. He did not ask Henry which way to go, but the car went up the right road. When they came to the woods, he said to Henry, stay here in the car. He ran alone up the hill to the boxcar. It seemed like magic that he knew where to go. When Dr. Moore came back, he was carrying Violet in his arms. Jesse and Benny and Watch came too. They all got into the car. Are you going to take her to a hospital, asked Henry? No, said Dr. Moore. I'm taking her to my house. When they stopped at last, Dr. Moore carried Violet into the house and said to his mother, Violet is very sick. We must put her to bed. Mrs. Moore hurried around opening beds and bringing pillows, and Mary came from the kitchen with hot water bottles. After a while, Violet began to get warm. Then Mrs. Moore came to get the other children. You must stay here all night, she said. She gave Henry and Benny a big bed, and Jesse slept on a little one, but Violet was so sick the doctor did not go to bed all night. He would not leave her. He sat by her side until 10 o'clock in the morning. Before 10 o'clock, a man came to see the doctor. Mary told him he could wait, so he sat down in the living room. Soon, Benny came in. Where's the doctor? asked the man. He's up in Violet's room, answered Benny. This means $5,000 to him if he will come down, said the man. Oh, he can't come now, said Benny. What do you mean, boy? asked the man. What is he doing? He's taking care of my sister Violet, said Benny. She is sick. And you mean he wouldn't leave her even if I gave him $5,000, asked the man. Yes, said Sir Benny. That's what I mean. Then the man said, you see, I have lost a little boy and I think the doctor knows where he is. My little boy is just about as old as you are. Well, if you don't find him, maybe you can have me, remarked Benny. I like you. Oh, Benny. Benny, 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 Benny. You do, cried the man. Come and get in my lap. Benny climbed in the man's lap. Have you got a dog, yes? No, said the man. He's dead now, but you can see him in my watch. Here it is. Benny looked at the dog. He looks like a very good dog, he said. I have a dog, too. His name is Watch. Just then, Watch came in with Dr. Moore. Good morning, said Dr. Moore. Benny, you can go play with Watch. <clears throat> Benny ran out, and the man said, Dr. Moore, where are my grandchildren? Dun, dun, dun. Didn't see that one coming. Dr. Moore, where are my grandchildren? That little boy is one of them, said Dr. Moore quietly. <sighs> that beautiful little boy, said the man. Yes, said Dr. Moore. They are all good children, but they are afraid of you. They are afraid you will find them. How do you know that, asked the man. They have changed their name, said the doctor. The big boy changed his name on field day. You saw him then. I saw him. What did he change his name to, asked the man. Henry James, said the doctor. The running boy, cried the man. The boy who won the free-for-all. I like that boy. So I am his grandfather. Interesting turn of events. Chapter 12. James Henry and Henry James. Dr. Moore went to get his mother. Mother, he said, this is Mr. James Henry Alden. He wants to take his grandchildren to live with him. I'm afraid they won't want to go with you, said Mrs. Moore, until they learn to like you. And they won't want to go while Violet is so sick. Can I see them, begged Mr. Alden. I won't tell them who I am. That would help, agreed the doctor. If they grow to like you before they know who you are, things might be easier. Yes, said Doc Mrs. Moore. Stay here with us for a while. The children will learn to like you, and then we can tell them that you are their grandfather. Thank you, said Mr. Alden. I will go home and get some clothes and come back, and I will give you the $5,000. Oh, that's money. But Dr. Moore would not take the money. I just want these children to be happy, he said. When Mary learned that she was to cook for Mr. Alden, she was frightened. How can I cook for him, she cried. He has everything. He is a very rich man. You can cook for anyone, said Dr. Moore kindly. Just get one of your good chicken dinners and make some cherry dumplings. At dinner, Mr. Alden saw all his grandchildren but Violet. He smiled with delight when he saw Jessie come into the room in her quiet way. Children, said Mrs. Moore, this is Mr. Henry. 
Benny laughed. Henry and Mr. Henry, he remarked. That's funny. Henry shook hands with Mr. Alden before he sat down at the table. Where have I seen that man before, he thought. The children liked to hear Mr. Henry talk. He told them about a big cucumber in his garden. The cucumber was growing inside a bottle, and he couldn't get it out. Why not, asked Benny. It's too big, said Mr. Alden. How did I, how did it get in, asked Benny. How could a cucumber grow inside? How could a big cucumber be inside a glass bottle? How? Do you know? You might have an answer. Maybe your answer is, it was a little cucumber when it went in, said Mr. Alden. Oh, my guess was a seed in dirt, but a little cucumber, okay. A cucumber will grow just the same in a bottle. It will grow so big, you can't get it out. I'd like to see the cucumber, said Benny, stopping in the middle of his cherry dumpling. Would you really? asked Mr. Alden, delighted. Someday you and I will go over and pick it. And we could bring it to Violet, said Benny. Yes, we'll bring it to Violet, agreed Mr. Alden. Henry thought again, where have I seen that man before? I wish I could remember. Hmm. He could not remember, but he liked Mr. Alden very much. All the children liked him because he was kind to them. At last, one day, Mr. Alden could see Violet and went softly into her room with some beautiful flowers from his garden. The children loved him when he patted Violet's dark head and told her that he was sorry she had been sick. He told her, too, about his garden, where the flowers came from. I'd like to see your garden, said Violet. I love flowers. How long are you going to stay, Mr. Henry? asked Benny. Shh, Benny, said Jesse. I want to stay here as long as I can, my boy, said Mr. Alden quietly. Henry looked at the man again. He knew that he had heard him say, my boy, before. Now, where was it? He could not remember. I wonder if Henry's going to remember, like at the last minute. After dinner, Mr. Alden sat under a tree, reading. Henry was working in the flower garden in front of the house. He looked at Mr. Alden again and again. Suddenly, it came to him as the man smiled over his book. It's the same man who gave me the $25 prize in the silver cup, he said to himself. I didn't remember him at first because I was so excited when he shook hands with me. He took another look and said again, It's the very same man. Henry sat thinking for a little while. Then he got up and went to find Dr. Moore. Do you know who gave me the prize on field day? He asked the doctor. Do you know what his name was? James Alden of the Mills, replied the doctor. J.H. Alden over at Greenfield. He did not look at Henry while he was saying it. Poor Henry was so surprised, he almost fell over. That kind man was his grandfather. He went out and sat on the steps to think it over. To begin with, this man was too young. Henry had thought of his grandfather as being an old man with white hair. And Miss, Mrs. Moore had called him Mr. Henry. Could it be the man he knew was their grandfather and hadn't told him? Then he saw that Mr. Alden was getting out of his chair under the trees. It's now or never, thought Henry. I have to know. He walked eagerly after the man who was going toward the garden with his back to Henry. Then the man turned around and saw how excited Henry was. Are you James Henry Alden of Greenfield? Henry asked. <clears throat> I am, my boy, replied Mr. Alden with a smile. Does that mean you know that I know you are Henry James Alden? Yes, said Henry quietly. Then James Henry Alden shook hands again with Henry James Alden. Jesse and Benny came across the grass just in time to hear Henry say, But grandfather... Grandfather, cried Jesse. What do you mean, Henry? Yes, Jesse, said Henry eagerly. He's the man we have been running away from all this time. I thought you were old, said Benny. And cross, Jesse said so. Cross means like kind of crabby, kind of like... I didn't know, Benny, said Jesse. Her face was red to think of running away from this kind man. But her grandfather did not seem to mind. He patted her on the head and said, let's go up and see Violet. There was no stopping Benny. He hurried into Violet's room, holding Mr. Alden by the hand and shouting, it's grandfather, Violet, and he isn't cross after all. What do you mean, asked Violet? Isn't he Mr. Henry? My name is James Henry Alden, replied the grandfather. And my name is Henry James Alden, cried Henry. Well, well, said Dr. Moore. Violet held on to Grandfather's hand and listened to the rest talk, talking excitedly. 
Where have you been living? asked Mr. Alden at last. They all looked at each other. Even Dr. Moore and his mother. They all laughed as if they would never stop. You just ought to see, said Dr. Moore. What? cried all the children at once. You saw it in the daytime? Is that so? laughed the doctor. I have seen it many times in the daytime. Seen what? asked Mr. Alden. Our house, said Jesse. We have been living in a boxcar in the woods. Then they all began to tell him about the dump and the dishes and the brook and the swimming pool. They have four beds of pine needles in the car, said Dr. Moore. How do you know? asked Jesse. Well, said Dr. Moore, the first day Henry worked for me, I walked after him as far as the hill. Why did you do that? asked Mr. Alden. I liked him. I saw he was a fine boy and I wanted to see where he lived. But you can't see the boxcar from the hill, said Jesse. No, but I came back that night and looked around, said Dr. Moore. About ten o'clock, cried Jesse. Yes, said the doctor. I stepped on a stick and you heard me. A, a rabbit, cried Jesse and Henry. Watch barked. I thought it was a rabbit. Yes, I heard the dogs bark, so I knew you were in the boxcar. Then I went home. But you came back, asked Jesse. Oh, yes. When you were picking cherries, I went up to see your house. I wanted to see if you had enough to eat and enough dishes. Why didn't you tell me, asked Mr. Alden. Didn't you know they were my grandchildren? The doctor laughed. Yes, I did, but they were having such a fine time that I didn't want to tell. They got along very well until Viola got sick. Then I told you. I'm glad you did, said Mr. Alden. I have seen your house, too, said Mrs. Moore. I went up one day and saw all your dishes. I like your big pitcher and teapot. All of you have seen it but me, said Mr. Alden. Well, we'll show it to you, cried Benny. I'll show you my cart made of wheels and my pink cup. Good for you, Benny, said his grandfather, much pleased. When Violet gets well, we'll all go up there. If you will show me your house, I'll show you my house. Do you have a house, asked Benny in surprise. Yes, you can live there with me if you like it. I have been looking for your children for a, I have been looking for you children for a very long time. Violet was soon well again, and one afternoon they all started out to see the boxcar. The doctor took him in his car. Many people looked out their windows to watch Mr. Alden and his grandchildren. They were glad that the children had found such a kind grandfather at last. When they arrived at their old home, they ran around all talking excitedly, looking for the bone that he had buried buried. Oh, excuse me. All excitedly. I got ahead there. Watch sniffed and sniffed all around looking for the bone he had buried. Everything was the same. Here's the dam for the pool, said Henry to his grandfather. See our building, shouted Benny, for that was what he called the fireplace. It really burns too. And this is the refrigerator in the waterfall. And here's my pink cup. They all stepped on the stump and they climbed into the car. They looked at the four beds and the dishes. Here's the same old pitcher and teapot, said Jesse laughing. They found the blue tablecloth, and they all sat down by the brook and ate chicken and bread and butter and cookies. Benny drank milk from his pink cup. All right, we're on the last chapter. Forgetting, oh, almost. One more page before the last chapter. If you're getting tired, you need a break, just pause it. Come back to it later. Uh, come, we ought to go now, said Dr. Moore at last. The sun is going down. I don't want Violet to take any more cold. They closed the boxcar door and said goodbye, but they were all sorry to go. Tomorrow, said Mr. Alden. Will all of you come to see my house? Tomorrow. Oh, yes, cried the children happily. They did not know what a beautiful house it was and what good times they were going to have in it. Chapter 13. A New Home for the Boxcar. I wonder what that means. The children's grandfather wanted them to like his house. He wanted them to live with him all the time. So he had made over some of the rooms just for them. The children went with him to his car to see the house. When the car stopped in front of it, Henry cried in surprise, Do you live here in this beautiful house? It was a beautiful house. It was very big, with many trees and flower gardens around it. You may live here, too, if you like my house, remarked his grandfather, watching Henry's face. The house was beautiful inside, too. There were flowers everywhere. There were maids everywhere. The children went up to the bedrooms. Can you imagine having a maid that cleans up after you? Folds your laundry, puts your dishes in the dishwasher, makes you food, dusts soft things that are dusty, 
recharges your controller batteries for your video games. That would be cool. The children went up to the bedrooms. Oh, cried Jesse. This is Violet's room. <clears throat> it really was Violet's room. There were violets on the wallpaper and the bed was white with a violet cover. On the table were flowers. What a beautiful room, cried Violet, sitting down in a soft, pretty chair. All the children shouted when they saw Benny's room. The wallpaper was blue and covered with big rabbits and dogs and bears. There were rocking horse, there was a rocking horse and a toolbox and little tables and chairs. And an engine stood on a track with cars almost as big as the little boy himself. Benny ran over to the engine. So when they say engine, they mean train. It's another, another way of saying train. Can I run this train all day, he asked. He sat down on the floor by the engine. Oh, no, said Henry. You are going to school as soon as it begins. His grandfather laughed. That is right, my boy. You will like school. You will learn to read. Oh, I can read now, said Benny. In Jessie's room, they found a bed for Watch. It was on the floor by her bed. Watch got in at once, sniffed at the pillow, turned around three times, and lay down. He likes it, said Jessie. He will sleep by me. Just then the children heard a doorbell ring. A maid come up to find, came up to find Mr. Alden. A man to see you, she said, about the dog. Now when Jessie heard the word dog, she was frightened. She was afraid it was about Watch. They won't take Watch away, she whispered to Henry. No, indeed, said Henry. We'll never, never give him up. Henry and Jessie and the other children went down to their grandfather to see the man. And Jessie was more frightened than ever. Watch did not growl at the man. He jumped up on him delightedly. Delightedly. <clears throat> you see, he was my dog, said the man. But I sold him to a lady, and he ran away from her that very day. I have to turn him over to the lady I sold him to. How do you know he's the same dog, asked Mr. Alden. Oh, he is my dog, said the man. You see, he knows me, and he has a small black spot on his foot. But someone has cut his hair on one side. Benny looked. He found the black spot on Watch's foot. I never saw that spot before, said Henry. I will give you what you want for the dog, said Mr. Alden. The children love him. They want to keep him. But I sold him to a lady, said the man. I must take the dog to her. Then Henry said, maybe she will want to change to another dog when she sees his hair. If she will agree to take another dog, will you let my grandfather have this one? Yes, I will, said the man. Let's go and ask her, said grandfather. She will let Jesse have watch. He is her dog, but she took the thorn out of his foot. And she took the thorn out of his foot. Picture. I jumbled up my words there for a second. The man told Mr. Alden where the lady lived, and they all started out to find her. She was a very pretty young lady, and she asked them to sit down. But Benny could not wait. He said, please let us keep watch. I want him, and Jesse wants him, and we didn't know he was your dog. What do you mean? asked the lady, laughing. Who's watch? This dog is Watch, answered Henry. A man came to Grandfather's house today and told us that he had sold the dog to you. When Watch ran away from you, the day you bought him, he came to us. He had a thorn in his foot, and Jesse took it out. Watch looked up at the lady and wagged his tail. When she looked at him, she began to laugh. Look at his side, she said. Who cut his hair? I'm sorry, said Henry. Benny did, Benny did that one day with violet scissors. I'm not sorry, said the lady laughing. He looks so funny. And you want to keep him? Is that it? Oh, yes, said Jesse eagerly. The man will let us have him if you take another dog. Don't be afraid, said the young lady. You may keep the dog. I can change to another one. Oh, thank you. You were nice, cried Benny. He ran to the lady and climbed up in her lap before anyone could stop him. I'd like to keep you, Benny, in place of the dog, laughed the lady, putting her arms around him. How happy the children were to have watch to keep. Mr. Alden gave the money to the man at once. Four happy children sat with their grandfather around the Alden dinner table at night. The maid smiled in the kitchen to hear the children laugh. And the children laughed because Watch had a hair at the table beside Jesse and was really waited on by a maid. That's what I was talking about, being waited on by a maid. Would you ever think that four children could be homesick in such a beautiful house? Jesse was the first one to wish for the old boxcar. One day, she said, Oh, Grandfather, I'd like to cook something once more in the dear old kettle in the woods. Go out in the kitchen, my dear, said her grandfather. The maids will help you. You can cook all you want. 
Jesse liked this, but it wasn't like the days in the boxcar. Then one day, Benny said, Grandfather, I wish I could drink my milk out of my dear old pink cup. His grandfather began to think. He had some pink cups, but they were not so dear to Benny as his old cracked one. At last, Mr. Alden said, I'm going to give you children a surprise. Is it very nice? asked Benny. No, not very, laughed his grandfather. It's not pretty at all. When will it come? asked Benny. It will come today. You children must all go over to Dr. Moore's and stay until the surprise comes. What can it be? wondered Violet. Her grandfather laughed. I hope you will like it, he said. It is very heavy. Any guesses? Any predictions? I have one. I'm not going to say it. The children were glad to see Mrs. Moore and the kind doctor again. They stayed until Mr. Alden had the surprise ready. Then Dr. Moore and his mother went back with them in the big car. <clears throat> Mr. Alden was happy as a boy. He took them by the garage, through the big gardens. At last they came to a garden with a fountain in the middle with trees around it. Near the fountain was the surprise. Here it is. It was the old boxcar. <laughs> the children ran over to it with cries of delight, opened the door and climbed in. All the things were in place. Even the old dead stump was there to step on. Here was the old knife which had cut butter and bread and vegetables and firewood and string. Here was Benny's pink cup and here was his bed. Here were the big kettle and the blue here was the big kettle and the blue tablecloth. Here were the pitcher and the old teapot. And here was the dinner bell, which the children had made from an old tin can. <sighs> Coffee calling my name. Benny hung it on a tree with a string and rang over to it. And rang it over and over again with a spoon. Watch rolled on the floor of the car and barked and barked. Then he began to sniff at everything. He's looking for the bony berry, laughed Benny. How they love the old boxcar, said Mrs. Moore. I love to see them so happy. Thank you for the surprise, Grandfather, said Violet. We'll never go away from you again. I hope not, my dear, said Mr. Alden. We'll live happily ever after. And so they did. One final picture. That was a good book. No, it's just a little information in the back. Okay, The Boxcar Children. This was the first one. I have the second one and the third one. I'm not sure what I'm going to read on Monday. Not on Monday, on Tuesday, because Monday you have the day off. Tuesday, I'm not sure what I'm going to read, but it's going to be a surprise. It's going to be good. Uh, I hope you have a good four-day weekend. And if you tuned in for this video, that's cool. It is a four-day weekend. Today, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So enjoy it. Have fun with your family. I will see you Tuesday.